Hello and welcome. My name is Ryan. I'm also known as RM2K Dev. Now, in the last few videos, we've um, we've created our NPC characters and our quests. That's great. I've given you guys a little bit of a treat as to sort of where our game is heading. The thing we need to do now is we need to get a map sorted. Obviously, this map that we've uh, created in the first episode it was great for testing, but we're building a game here, so we need to get some proper full-size maps. Now, in the last few weeks, I've been sort of looking into different techniques that we could use to create these maps. The first video, I showed you guys a technique where we built the maps inside of the Game Maker editor. I also created um, a RPG Maker auto tile system for Game Maker that could be used, but all in all, the, the maps in Game Maker tend to take quite a lot of time to build, and it's just not really that efficient. So I've sort of come up with a pretty awesome way that I think we can do this quite fast. Now if you own a copy of RPG Maker, or if you don't, download the demo. Um, we're going to install RPG Maker and this is a, a fantastic tool for creating uh, maps, but it's not really fantastic in terms of exporting them and using them in Game Maker because there's a lot of steps involved. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you guys a really simple trick to get our maps from RPG Maker and into Game Maker. So the first thing I want to do is I just want to create a new room and this is just to demo to you guys. I want to show you guys a principle here. Some people may say that this um, is not very efficient but I want to show you guys that it is. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to create the really large room, let's say 1500 by 1500. It's going to have nothing in it. And I'm just going to run this game in debug mode so you can see what the frame rate is. Here we go. So our frame rate according to Game Maker is fluctuating between about 900 and 1500 uh, frames per second. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set this to 60 frames per second, uh, the speed, and I'm just going to enable a view just so we can get a, a better idea of um, what the frame rate will be. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> We're getting a much better um, idea of what our frame rate is here. It's it's fluctuating too fast to see, but I can see the numbers 1, 1 through to 1, 4. So I'm going to say between 1100 and 1400 frames per second. So now, go back to RPG Maker. Let's create a map. Now for the, for the purposes of this demo, I'm just going to use a sample map because it's a lot faster. Um, and we're just creating it. We're creating a game here. So like I said to you guys in the very first video, I'm not the greatest mapper. So I'm just going to use some sort of prefab off the off the off the shop sort of map. Um, I'm just going to go with this regular town map here. There we go. So we've we've basically got a map that we can use inside of Game Maker right here. But there's a little, there's a couple of things that we need to do first. So one of the things that we need to do, all of these trees and objects that are on the map, we're going to handle these inside of Game Maker. So we spend a little bit of time and just erase these from the game. So I'm not too familiar with RPG Maker, but I'm just going to attempt to take off as many of these trees and shrubs as I can, because we're going to handle all of that stuff with our own Game Maker. All these shrubs, trees, we don't need any of this. This does take a little bit of time, but it's far, far more effective at mapping than um, Game Maker's internal mapper is. And you get a lot better results, I think. People tend to have, people have a lot more tutorials on YouTube about how to use RPG Maker for mapping. Okay, so once you've cleaned up the map and there's no more objects sort of on the screen anymore, you've just got a very basic map. You've you've got the landscape, you've got a couple of houses, and just your your basic navigational tiles. You know, just just the core the core gameplay. We want to put our player for in RPG Maker somewhere on this map. So just right click and go set starting position player, and go to tools and scripts. Now I found this script online. It's called uh, Map Saver. It's quite a large script, but basically it allows you to export your map as a PNG file. So what I'll do is I'll link this script in the description. Um, this script was created by a person called Hime. Um, and yeah, 
it, it's quite a good script it's very fast as well um, so all we need to do is just run our game which I'll do now start the game once you're in the game you hit the F7 button and that basically just says exported in however many seconds it took and map shop taken so now all we need to do is just go to our file system and you have to find the project so in my case the project is stored under documents RPG VX Ace and then the project is called houses and in in the project folder you'll find a folder called map shots underneath that you will find the export of the map that you just uh, pressed F7 on so let's edit this and just have a quick look so there you go there is our map in paint right now from RPG Maker to paint the next step you need a more advanced image editor um, you can use GIMP I'm going to use Photoshop just because that's what I have and know how to use but basically what we're going to do is we come to the slice tool and we'll create a slice around the entire image then we right click in the top right hand corner and we select divide slice we want to divide horizontally into and I want to set this horizontally into say 480 and I want to set the vertical into 640 so what this does is this gives us some 640 by 480 sized frames and a little bit on the end but that doesn't matter too much so once you've done that select OK and then we just go file save for web we select our file format as PNG 24 and select save then you navigate to a folder on your file system in this in my case I've got a folder set up for this project so it's under my uh, pictures game stuff game maker RPG tutorial folder and then a maps folder what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna call this um, let's just call this home city and then select make sure that slices down here at the bottom is set to all slices and then just select save and what that will do is it will save each of these um, images as a uh, as an individual frame so I need to find that um, pictures game stuff game maker tutorial RPG maps Here we go. so now we have a folder called images full of home city 01 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 now if you pay attention in inside of Photoshop you'll see that there's three images per row and that's what we need to copy inside of um, game maker three of these per row so go back to your game maker project under backgrounds create a new group and call this levels under this create a new group and call this uh, home city and then all we need to do is just take these nine images and drag those into game maker and select background then just move those into the uh, into the home city folder okay once that's done we don't need to do anything else we can come back to our uh, our new room in game maker we're gonna call this RM home city now we need to find out the dimensions of that map that we just took so if we go back to RPG maker you'll see that the regular town in the bottom right hand corner it says regular town is 43 by 45 tiles so if we open up calculator we say 43 multiply that by 32 because each tile is 32 pixels wide that's 1376 that's our width and our height is 45 multiplied by 32 that's 1440 now if you zoom out on your map a little bit this is the part where we get to actually create the map and this is very fast and efficient this is the fastest way that I think you could possibly make a map inside of game maker so go to tiles go to levels home city home city 01 and place that 640 by 480 chunk so basically just go through the map and place those tiles in rows of three Basically, I've now recreated the RPG Maker map inside of Game Maker.
what I want to show you guys and the reason why I did that little performance benchmark at the start of this video is to show you guys what sort of performance hit that we're going to expect by doing it this way rather than doing it as individual tiles. Now obviously the file size of our game is going to be a little bit bigger because we're going to be storing all of these as pictures basically. However, when the game is compressed and ready for packaging, all of these grass tiles will be compressed down into one grass tile anyway because that's how um, most compression works. So when we do actually compress this game, it will it should shrink down to about the size that it would have been had we just used a tile set and placed these images around. The other thing is, Game Maker's internal tile engine is only going to be rendering what is available on the screen at any one time. So by using 640 by 480 chunks, we can ensure that only four of those chunks will ever be rendered on the screen at one time, given if you were standing in the center of four of them. I'm just going to show you guys what sort of performance hit we get. Okay, so our frame rate right now, according to what I can see on, it's moving too fast for me to see, we have dropped, we are fluctuating between 1062 and what I can see on my screen, it looks like about 1300. Yeah, 1331 is the highest that I could find. So if I stop the game, I think Game Maker will actually tell us. There we go. Our minimum frames per second was 200, and our maximum frames per second was 3623. And we were averaging about 2567 frames per second. So we haven't really hit any performance uh, impact at all in this, doing, doing it this way. Um, so I'm just going to reopen my map, there we go. So now, the reason I had you guys remove all of those graphical resources, all of the objects from the game basically, is because we do that using the Game Maker objects. So if we go back to our nature, we have flowers and trees. We can place those back in the map as they were. The only thing that you'll notice this time is that we don't have any rear depth ordering. But that's fine, we can get around that by placing things around the front of objects to make it look like those objects are actually behind. So this is probably a terrible, like I said, I'm a terrible mapper. I, I make no claims to be a good mapper. But basically, yeah, that's what we do. We, we put our trees around the map. Now, I'm just using these trees because I haven't actually converted the other trees that were originally on this map, but what you could do at this point is go ahead and actually start to create some of those resources. And now we, we place our hero inside of this. So let's go party object hero. Let's place our hero. Let's place him here. <clears throat> so if we run our game, what you'll see... Oh, we need to enable physics on this room, sorry. Room is a physics world. 0, 0.0 gravity. We also need to set up our view. Sorry, I should have done this earlier. Um, I don't actually remember what our view settings were, so let me just take a quick look. It was halved. Okay. So our width is 320 and our height is 240. There we go. And we're centering on the hero object. 20 by 240. There we go. So now... What you'll notice is our character obeys the collisions that we had previously set. We're still able to walk over all this stuff, but we can get around that quite easily. And what you'll also notice is the game is running really fast. It's very smooth. There's there's no performance hit here. We've basically brought in a, a whole map in 10 minutes. And if I wasn't talking, it probably would have taken about 3 minutes. Um, so yeah, like I said, go ahead and make all of your maps inside of RPG Maker, and I'll link that script in the description. So big thank you to whoever made that script. I think his name was Hime. I will double check that, because I do believe in proper credits. Yep, author was Hime. So I'll go ahead and I'll link this script in the description, and um, yeah, like I said, guys, thanks for watching. Um, this video was more of a, a precursor to creating our actual game. So we've created NPCs, we've created quests, we've, created, we've done all of our groundwork, now we're actually gonna start working on building a proper game and to do that we needed a proper map so in the next video I'll go over creating a collision system for this map um, and I'll show you guys how that works and then we'll move on to doing things like we'll bring that dialogue box in we'll start to add some signs around the town uh, and 
Z-Bob may even make a return. So if you're excited to see Z-Bob again, please leave a comment in the description. Favorite and like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.